Hello everyone, welcome to more Shinkansen Space Plane Testing and Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchrobol Space Program 1.12. Here we have the two space planes together, the carrier plane which is full of fuel, and then this is the space plane that we're looking at right now. And I've made vacuum versions of the Rex engines for the space plane. And so these are methane oxygen engines. The big ones have a nozzle ratio of 84. The smaller ones, the sea level ones, have a nozzle ratio of 42. And they provide 1,500 kilonewtons of thrust. And so here we go, the one on the left is the one that is not carrying crew, the one on the right is the one that's carrying the crew, and up we go. So the test is to try to get to orbit, but as it turns out, we're not going to get to orbit. Uh, I made the vacuum version of the engines because I found out that the Delta V wasn't quite good enough, and even with the improved ISP, uh, the improved efficiency of the bigger engines, uh, it's still not quite enough. We're gonna have to make the space plane slider, but that's okay. I only really wrote in uh, rough values for the masses of things. I'll go in and really try and check exactly how much mass everything is, and hopefully we'll get them lighter that way. So here the carrier plane is turning off some engines, two engines, so that it can maintain the balance because it's getting lighter whereas the space plane is getting fuel from it right now and so it's maintaining its mass. And so in order to keep the thrust pointed through the center of mass, the carrier plane turns off two engines and then ultimately of course once it runs out of fuel, it goes off. And not completely out of fuel because we have residuals in the game right now and so the RCS will still have the residuals to work off of and so the carrier plane can orient itself using that. Where the heck it lands I haven't figured out yet. Let's set that aside for now. Uh, if we're launching out of Tampico, I still don't know where it's going to be landing. Anyway, it's very apparent at this point that we are not going to have enough Delta V for orbit and so I decide to continue on so that we can do a re-entry test. And so this is going to become a re-entry test and a landing test from not quite orbit, but pretty darn close, about 500 meters per second shy of orbit. And so here we are, just using the vacuum engines right now. I turned off the sea level engines, of course, because we want better efficiency. And they don't get that much better efficiency, it's like 10 seconds of ISP. The sea level ones get 358, the vacuum ones get 368. And the reason for that is we still need the vacuum ones to be able to fire at sea level. So they have better efficiency in vacuum, but it's not uh, so high that they aren't usable at sea level. Otherwise, the whole thing would have very low thrust weight ratio at liftoff. So here we are uh, rolling around. The old Shinkansen solved that problem by having extendable nozzles. I haven't gone to that yet, but maybe I will. And here we go into the atmosphere. We're below 80 kilometers. And one interesting thing was, unfortunately, we we're going into the dark in this re-entry. I didn't really time our launch to optimize for that because I was hoping to actually get to orbit. Uh, but anyway, uh, one interesting thing was the flame effects on this, the re-entry effects were actually pretty good. A lot of the times I'm not satisfied with the re-entry effects, but uh, they actually look pretty good on the Shinkansen this time. As you can see, they're very streaky and sort of realistic-like even. Uh, but maybe, as some people said, not starting soon enough. It should start up higher, but uh, still good. Uh, so we're only running on residuals right now. I used up all the propellant uh, trying to get to orbit, and we got to 7,300 meters per second or so, so 500 shy of orbit. And all we have left is the residuals on the tank that are being used for the RCS. And my hope was that we can get to re-entry with just that. And that is what we're trying to do here. Now, we wouldn't be able to do the orbiting and re-entry with just that, but as long as we can get through re-entry with just that, that would be good. The dry mass of this right now is about 40, 45, 46 tons, 45 tons, uh, but the old Shinkansen was more like 30 tons. I think that was a little bit too optimistic, but this might be a little bit too pessimistic. So, so it's the same general size. It's actually in some directions a little bit thinner. So hopefully we can optimize it a little bit. It's carrying more fuel, so there's no excuse for it to not get more performance. 
I'll just have, but I didn't want to go all the way down to the old estimate of the old Shinkansen because I thought that was a little bit too optimistic. All right, so here we are over Africa. We did a transatlantic abort, I guess, because we ran out of fuel. And it's still flaming along the way here. And here we are at Mach 7 at 40 kilometers. It definitely gets a lot of lift, actually. Even though it didn't seem to in the landing video, it gets a lot of lift. And this is good because it needs to be able to re-enter coming back from the moon. So we want it to be able to slow down soon rather than later. And the way it does this is having the big wing and having a fairly light body on top of that big wing. It's not like the space shuttle, right? The space shuttle is bulky. It's really tall. Uh, this one is really small. Height-wise, it'd be like half the size of the space shuttle. But wing-wise, it's about the same, or I don't know if it's bigger. But anyway, it has a little bit of trouble in the transonic region here. Below Mach 1.5, it gets a little bit wigglier. And I did ultimately turn off the engine gimbling because somebody thought that the engine gimbling was the issue. It's not so much, I don't think. It's still a little bit, as you can see. Something about atmospheric autopilot likes to yaw this thing. And maybe it's because of the weird way that we are controlling yaw because the vertical stabilizers are at a 45 degree angle like that. And it doesn't like that very much, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, we survived is the main thing. It survives its re-entry and it's balanced. It's not perfectly balanced. It's still a little bit nose heavy and so it's using some RCS to lift its, lift its nose up but just with the residuals it's able to come back down to hold itself together and not you know run out of the RCS propellant before landing and so I think that's a major accomplishment and our landing speed here is modest. I mean you know 130 meters per second getting better at that Though, okay, we're sort of skidding off to the side here. But yes, I think uh, improvements have been made and this is looking better as far as the re-entry and landing portion is concerned. And I like its performance during re-entry, especially since we were coming in fairly steeply since we didn't make a full orbit. Uh, the main problem is I need to squeeze some Delta V out of this deal. So... <laughs> Uh, back to where I, it was supposed to be better at that. I put more fuel in. So anyway, uh, I'll take a look at the structure in greater detail to see what I can do. Got other things to fix. But for now, I'll leave it here and say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.